two, three, four, five. We all know them. They are the natural numbers by which we count. And when Brahmagupta introduced the zero in the 7th century, the people assumed they knew every number they needed. Another group of numbers Brahmagupta wanted to introduce were the negative numbers. But these numbers were seen as absurd and people neglected them for a long time. The numbers I will now talk about are maybe even as absurd for you as negative numbers were a thousand years ago. The complex numbers. Before I tell you what exactly these numbers are, I shall explain how they are introduced in the mathematical world. That has everything to do with this formula, the cubic formula to solve cubic equations. This formula was discovered in 1535 by the Italian Niccolo Fontana Tartaglia. There was one problem with it. Some cubic equations couldn't be solved with a formula because the square root in it would become negative when the parameters would be filled in. And that's why Raphael Bombelli introduced imaginary numbers in his book Algebra in 1572. With these numbers, Bombelli was able to solve the problem with Tartaglia's formula. He decomposed the negative square roots into a positive square root and a square root of minus 1. And despite the fact that this square root of minus 1 doesn't have any value, he continued calculating with it, using the assumption that the square root squared is minus 1. And that was brilliant. Well, for that time then. But the fact that the square root of minus 1 squared is minus 1 bedeviled a lot of people, because it is not true according to the mathematical rule which says that the square root of a times the square root of b equals the square root of a times b. One of the bedeviled ones was Leonhard Euler. He was the one who banned the notation square root of minus 1 and gave the expression its own symbol, the letter i of imaginaire. Back to the number line now. Where do we put this number i? The answer is, we can't. However, actually we can but only if we transform this one-dimensional number line into a two-dimensional number plane. Now we can put i, here, on this vertical axis, at the distance of 1 from 0. Now I am able to tell what complex numbers are. A complex number is any possible point you can pick in this number plane. For example, this point here is 2 plus 3i. I mentioned it just before, the distance between i and 0 in the number plane is 1. This distance is called the modulus. We give it the letter r. And so does 2 plus 3i also has a modulus. It's the square root of 13. We can use the modulus to express a complex number in another way, namely polar. No, not polar, but like polar coordinates, thus in a distance to zero and an angle with a positive horizontal axis. In our number plane, that is the axis with the positive classic numbers. This angle is called the argument, which we give the Greek letter phi. The argument of 2 plus 3i is about 56.3 degrees. Now we can our former Cartesian way of expressing transform in a polar way. With goniometry, we can see that the real distance of 2 is the same as the square root 13 times the cosine of 56.3, and the imaginary distance of 3 is the same as square root 13 times the sine of 56.3. So 2 plus 3i is the same as square root 13 times cosine of 56.3 plus i times sine of 56.3. When Euler worked with this, he came up with something very cool, making use of power series. A power series is nothing more than an infinite polynomial. For example, 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, etc. Fact is that sine of x and cosine of x are also expressible as a power series. And there is another one. 
e to the power of x. Euler took that last one and used it to write e to the power of i times phi as a polynomial. And here's the cool part. Making use of the rule that i squared equals minus 1, this polynomial is exactly the same as the power series of cosine of phi plus i times the power series of sine of phi. So e to the power of i times phi equals cosine of phi plus i times the sine of phi. This is known as Euler's formula. And it becomes even more epic when we take phi as pi radians. Cosine of pi equals minus 1 and sine of pi equals 0. So what we get is the following. e to the power of i times pi equals minus 1. A little shift and we get e to the power of i times pi plus 1 equals 0. Now we have an expression that contains 0, 1 and i as well as e and pi and on top of that it contains an addition, a multiplication and an exponentiation. It's called Euler's identity. Well that's the beauty of mathematics. Thanks for watching.